everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reacting to actually happy. So let's start the video. Um, let's hold from to the to the top. Bottom. Come on, guys, this video is going to take a long time to load, but we will try to do our personal best to get this. Hey guys, my name is Anna. I wanted to tell you about my ex best friend, Molly. Our friendship was ru ruined by her persistent. Never trust what your friend says. If they do that, they're not really your friend, they're a scam. If it's online, especially. Especially if it's online. There is, they are definitely, kin they are ki trying to kidnap you in easy ways. teaching me how I should or shouldn't live my life. As a rule, the awfulness of her advice would manifest in small things. But one time, everything was totally different and very serious. At one point, it was even a question of life or death. But first things first, Molly always loved to give advice. Stupid advice, really. But I used to believe that she wanted the best for me. And even further, that she would get angry with me if I argued with her. So, I followed her guidance. She was happy you know, to tell guys, me how I should be. We're really running out of time, so let's speed up the video from the top. You know, to even bottom. though I usually had to deal with pretty unpleasant consequences. For example, once I needed to buy a dress for another school dance. Of course, I took Molly with me to the mall. After a few hours of shopping, I finally chose the perfect blue Ooh, with medium that looks dress. Good for However, sure. Molly didn't like it. She insisted I try on the dress that she picked out, which was yellow and way too tight for me. She persuaded me that I looked better in it, so I bought it. I couldn't even breathe properly in that dress. And at some point, while I was dancing, I moved the wrong way, and my dress ripped at the seams. <gasps> of course, I had to immediately leave the dance party. But not before a few people around me noticed what had happened. Long after that evening, my classmates were still making fun of me for it. And once, when Molly and I were at summer camp, I discovered a few nasty pimples on my face right before our group photo day. Molly said that she had the perfect recipe for a night mask that would inevitably clear up her skin. I was desperate, and I had no other choice but to follow her advice, again. When I woke up, I rushed to the mirror, and for a second, I wished I was still sleeping. My whole face was orange. The pimples were gone, though. Molly said- Good! I think Mo Molly made a genius, genius. Genius, a fucking genius contraption. So, I think she made it. It must have been whole camp made. You know what? She should try to make it so that doesn't happen. This is probably because the contents in the turmeric facial mask she made. Oh my gosh, the things I did to try to get rid of that face color back then. But nothing worked. I even got the nickname Anna, the orange banana, and everybody at the camp was laughing at me when I passed by. Nevertheless, I continued to be friends with Molly. And in this instance, never. it was especially important that I knew it's that whenever I talked to her, she keep a secret. Even. This happened when I figured out that something had changed inside me. 
I'd begun feeling nauseated and sleepy all the time, and I couldn't drink my ordinarily favorite coffee because of its smell. Back then, I had been dating Evan McAllen for slightly more than a month. He was Evan McAllen? What the fuck? When I found out I was pregnant, I got really scared. And of course, Molly was the first one I told. That time, I really needed some serious advice and definitely couldn't stand any of her stupid consequences like before. I was devastated, but Molly seemed to be stubborn. She thought that Evan should be informed about what had happened since he was equally responsible for the trouble I was now in, so to speak. But I didn't want him to know. You see, we were about to graduate from school in a month or so, and he was about to leave for college soon. We were going to live in different parts of the country, and we were hardly going to keep dating anyway. Besides, I still hadn't decided whether I was going to keep the baby or not, so I didn't want Evan to remember me as that girl who ruined his life and stuff. But Molly kept insisting on her opinion on the issue, and finally I got really irritated with it. So at some point, I told her to keep her nose out of it, and I told her how bad the pieces of advice she'd given me in the past had always been. I didn't mean to fight with her, but apparently my words were really offensive. So she just left me alone. And this time, I had to make my own decision without the opinion of my bestie. I was really scared to tell my mom about what was going on, but she literally was the only one who was able to help me at that moment. I felt so miserable when she said that she was very disappointed in me. I lied to her and told her that I didn't know who the father of the baby was, and she began yelling at me for that even harder. I cried really hard all night long, so much so that in the morning I could barely open my eyes that were swollen with tears. Finally. My mom told me that I had no option but to give birth to the baby and that she'll help me raise him or her. I felt more secure because I no longer had to make that decision, but at the same time, I felt even more devastated than before. I knew I was no longer going to go to college or hang out with my friends or do anything else that girls who are my age usually do. And one day, I was, as usual, sitting at home doing nothing and feeling sorry for myself when somebody knocked on my door. It was Evan with his parents. It turned out that Molly didn't listen to what I had told her about backing off my pregnancy, and she went and told everything to Evan. He, in turn, shared his problem with his parents. Oh, you can't even begin to imagine how big the scandal was that happened at my house back then. Evan's parents didn't want to believe that I was having his baby. They said they wouldn't provide any support until I had documented proof, like a DNA test or something. And my mom was trying to protect me, as they say, like a lioness, saying that she won't allow me to do any extra tests. I was crying, and Evan was trying to calm everybody down. It was stressful and totally awful. That fight didn't last for long, though. I was the one who ended it because I felt something strange and painful below my waist. I got really scared and almost fainted. Then the fuss began. Evan's parents took me and my mom to the hospital because we didn't have our own car. And for some strange reason, everybody just forgot that we could have called an ambulance. As you might have guessed, the stress that I was going through was manifesting physically <gasps> as well as mentally. And as my fate would have it, I lost the baby. Yay! You don't still be able have to deal with the crap anymore. Of course, Evan and I no longer dated, and I decided it would be better for me to just skip the last few days of school and the prom. Why? And Molly, oh, she apologized for what she had done, and I actually forgave her. But we could no longer be friends. Even though it has already been almost six months since my story happened, I still feel an emptiness inside. I hope you can understand why. I know I. Now let's watch the next episode. My dad said he was stalked. We laughed until he disappeared. Oh no, what's going to happen? Listen up. Soap you shower with? You probably haven't even questioned what bar of soap you left. Hi guys. My name is Dan. I know. Ah, strappy, crappy little. Oh my gosh. At first, my mom and I thought that everything was okay. But I still had a shot at the end of my life. That's when we began to call my friends and his colleagues. No one knew where Dad could be. Then, my mom and Dad's bosses were surprised us a lot when he said that that day my dad didn't show up at work and he didn't answer his phone calls because then my dad would really be overburdened. What's happening? Where was he? We called the police and two officers came to us and started asking us questions about my father. Soon after they found him, he was in the hospital. So my mother and I rushed there. When we got to the hospital and finally saw him, he was asleep. 
was covered with scratches and bruises. There were pieces of cloth in his clothes, and his shirt sleeve was almost torn up. Oh no. The doctor said that he had a concussion. He had some sort of short term memory loss. Everything else was fine. Officers said that he fell to the other side of the city. He was simply distracted at a high speed, lost control, and his car ended up in a ditch. He was nearly dead when he survived this accident. We spent the whole night in the hospital. When Dad woke up, we asked him what happened. His answer shocked us. He said that he didn't want to go because he was hit by another car. It was a serious outage. So the police started an investigation. They came to our house a few times and asked a lot of questions about our brother. They sent us a letter with their expert's conclusion. According to this letter, the car didn't have any traces of paint from another vehicle. It's clear that no one had rammed my father's car. Dad was given plenty of time to take some action and insisted that he was telling the truth. But my mom said that she believed the police and thought that my dad was lying and hiding something. Besides, where was he all day? Why didn't he go to work? To these questions, he replied, I just couldn't get to eat. So my parents sometimes fought like that. I didn't know he was right. I'm afraid that dad was acting like that. So he went to work and told the police his father was out to return the car. It seemed like he was afraid of something. He didn't think he could say no. The general of the atmosphere of was strange. But then something happened that was really scary. I was home after school one morning when I heard the front door slam loudly. Saw my father coming in. He was scared. He had huge eyes and could barely breathe. When he caught his breath, he finally said, I saw her again! That car! Then he ran up to the table and began to write something on a piece of paper. He tried to remember the car's license plate number, but he couldn't. Dad was really worked up. He nervously walked around the house saying that Mom had finally breathed again. But she didn't. Oh, God, there was no evidence. So they just buried her. And I can understand Mom. Her husband is acting strange, obviously hiding something. Of course, she didn't believe his words. Since then, I spent a lot of time looking for him. He was hiding behind something in his car clothes in the garage he had by the door, where he attached various photos and documents. He even installed security cameras around the house. I was determined to prove to me and my mom that he was right. They hooked me up after that night. But this is my dad. He always knows all I need. So he lived like this for two months. His dad sat in the garage and watched the video through the cameras. I knew that he had a lot of power over me in this world. He finally told us why we didn't go to work that night. I was having dinner with my mom, and Dad was sitting in the garage. We heard him shouting, Bingo! I found it! Ho, ho, ho! He came to the kitchen with a piece of paper in his hand. He said that the car that hit him got caught on camera. Now he has her license plate number. A couple of calls to his friends at the police station, and the case will be solved. But it only provoked another fight. And this time, my father was just on edge. I tried to say that he was wrong. There was so much confusion. Why was that car driving by our house? How did he know it was the right car? What friends at the police station? But he shouted, Once he finds out, Mom and I are going to apologize. And look. Just like again. My mother was really upset. She said that her dad's stubbornness and annoyance really made the relationship work. She was saying, if I was me, the back of my head, it's like he built that gun. I had this feeling that something bad was going to happen. And I was right. He didn't need to have that gun. I told my mom to call the police in case he had an accident again. But my mother was so mad at my dad that she wouldn't listen. He was still lying. So I called the police myself. For several weeks, we talked every day with the officers, looking for him in our city and in the neighboring towns, but we got no results. My dad was eventually put in prison. I can't tell you how I felt. A mother who filled my life with laughter and positivity just disappeared. I lost my mind when my dad was dead. I couldn't take it anymore. Almost a year ago, finally, mom picked up the phone, and her face changed immediately. Our father was found in another state, in a hospital. We immediately went to him. Like a homeless man, curly hair, shabby clothes. As it turned out, he had a mental disorder that was progressing. It wasn't related to the accident, but because of this coincidence, he became paranoid and the disease developed. Dad remembered this. He never knew where his house was, but he was sure he had to find the people who pushed him off the boat a year ago. Now, I feel guilty that my father got away. I just hope that he found her, or at least took care of her. After all, I can't indicate that he's not healthy at all. Mom and I just didn't listen to him. We thought he was lying. Yes, but we are both wrong. My dad was hurt because of our carelessness. Now we have a long process of treatment, and everything should be fine. But none of this would have happened if we had just been more attentive to our mother. Thanks for watching till the end, Captain. Okay, so I hope you have a great day and stay fresh. I have to end the video right there, but.